enter into your courts with praise. Oh God, I pray that you would allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Oh God, I ask that you hide me behind the cross. Although your people may be able to see me in the flesh, Lord God, I'm praying mightily, Lord God, that they would hear you in the spirit, Lord God. Let this word, Lord God, fall on a good ground. Lord God, we thank you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise because it all belongs to you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I wanted to share um, that... Um, Many of you know that I don't drive, and I thank the Lord for using those who deem it not robbery to allow me to get to the service and, and even bring me home. Um, pray with me about that, you know. Even now that I've been honored to be in this position, people say, you want to need your driver's license. What if the Lord call you to preach, you know, someplace, and you can't take a Uber or Lyft because it costs too much? So to God be the glory. And I noticed that, you know, colleagues would bring me home for work. I am truly grateful. I really am. And I say all that to say that not everybody is saved that I do get in the car with, but I'm always prayerful, so not everybody has songs that I want to listen to, you know. And Shiloh even said one time we were consecrating and we said that we were not going to listen to any secular music. We were just going to be cognizant that even with family members that we would say, if you don't mind, uh, could we turn to 1190? Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, you know, a song comes on, and the lyrics, I won't tell you who the artist is, and it says, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you. And then I said, now we know the songwriter more than likely was not talking about the Savior, but just what if those lyrics were a depiction of no matter what it took, we would not let anyone or anything get in the way of us getting to Jesus. Amen. Amen. You see, that is what the woman with the issue of blood did. She pushed through the crowd of folks just to get to Jesus, to touch the hem of his garment. Matthew 9, 20 to 21 says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Hallelujah. Now, what would it take for you to get to the Savior? Today, I'm not going to talk about the woman with the issue of blood, but specifically, I want to talk to you about doing whatever it takes to show God how much you love him. Amen. 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 The title of my message today, tonight, is whatever it takes okay now i'm speaking in the spirit i'm not saying whatever it takes for you to do in the flesh i want to put that disclaimer out there i'm saying whatever it takes within the guidelines of the word of god and the holy spirit that you do whatever it takes okay to please the lord hallelujah Amen. so not too long ago i purchased a book that will help me during my study of the word now, we all know that there's so many commentaries and even Bible handbooks, which my sister in Christ has shared with me. Um, but I want to say the ultimate study God, my sisters and brothers in Christ, is the Bible. Okay? Yeah. Basic instructions before leaving this earth. This is where your study would come from. I mean, we don't know the spirit in which the people that write the commentaries, I mean, there are some that we refer to, and sometimes you gotta go back to the word and say, hmm, let me just go back. But just know that the Bible is the ultimate study book, Amen. okay? Even the word of God says, to study to show thyself approved, a workman unto God, to be able to rightly divide the word. And we will ever be growing in understanding of this word. So it's not like, I don't know everything, but and even, and I use an illustration that, you know, Peter could have walked on water, right? But he lacked faith, so he sunk. I want to be able to have enough faith that when Jesus called me, that I would be able to Amen. walk on the water Amen. and I would not sink. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the study that I was doing, there was a story titled, The Sacrifice of Isaac. 
Isaac was a miracle child born to Abraham and Sarah in their old age as the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham to make his descendants a great nation. Hallelujah. So if you would turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 18, and I'm going to really read 1 through 15 because I really need to it, you know, get to the gist of the story. You can stand, you can sit, but I'm just going to read it, okay? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm not coming from the King James Version, but praise the Lord. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass by, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant, very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abram hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sayas of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then bought some curds and a milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah, they asked him. There, in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Amen. Now Sarah was listening in the, at the entrance of, to the tent, which was behind them, and Abraham and Sarah, they were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed. <laughs> As she thought, after I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why does Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied, and she said, I did not laugh, but he said, yes, you did laugh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if you look at verse 15, of course, the prophecy came true. Mm -hmm. Abraham obeyed God, name of the baby Isaac, which means he laughs. So let us not just focus on the name, but the mere fact that Abraham did whatever it took to please God. Is that your testimony today? Amen. Are you going to do, like I say, that my disclaimer is not in the flesh, because people can do anything in the flesh to do whatever it takes to get something, but we're going to do whatever it takes to us to get to God so that he may be pleased. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's give you a little background. Prior to this, because of the doubt that Sarah had, she initially gave her handmaiden to Abraham to have a child, which was named Ishmael. However, after Isaac was born, they were sent away. Then this happened. Let the church say, now this happened. This, this happened. happened. So I'm going to move to my focal verses, which comes from Genesis 22, 1 to 2. And it says, after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. You know that son I promised? The one I said was going to father many nations? The one you love? Yeah, him. Now I need you to go ahead and start walking in this direction, and then I'll tell you exactly where to go. Once you get to that spot, <laughs> you're going to kill him. The question the writer highlighted to ask was, does God test us? Yes, he sure does. And then the writer asks, does he tempt us? No, he does not. Praise the Lord. You see, God tested Abraham, and he tests us too, because he knows 
we can and prayerfully will make the choice that reflects our trust and love for him. He both sets us up to honor him and he strengthens us in his obedience. You see, when you tempt someone on a diet, you put a candy in front of them, <laughs> you know they face you want to tempt them, help me, Holy Ghost. Um, <laughs> that morning, Abraham wakes up early, saddle his donkey, packs everything they will need, gets some of his servants, goes in the directions the Lord instructs him to, and Abraham gets to the mountain. Everybody say mountain. mountain. And God shows him the exact place to slaughter his son. Abraham binds Isaac up, raises his knife in the air to kill him, but at that very moment, God calls to Abraham, and he replies, here I am. My That's God. a surrender. Hallelujah. Whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That is a whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Abraham was willing to sacrifice the son that God promised him. The son that he never thought what he would have until it was prophesied to him. His only begotten son. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. His only begotten son. The promised son. What would it take for you, saints, to trust God? What is it going to take for you to trust God? Hallelujah. Whatever it takes should be your testimony. But unfortunately, it's not for every believer, my Lord. If God blessed you with the home to whatever it takes to seek God, to pay the rent, the mortgage, whatever it is, it could be a room to whatever it takes to seek the Lord about it. Because if it's a situation where you lack, he will be the provider Hallelujah. if you just trusted him. Hallelujah. If God blessed you with a job, my Lord, do whatever it takes. Get to work one time. Be productive. Some of the saints at my job, they got all these scriptures written on their desk. Yet, they're using colorful metaphors. Mm -hmm. They coming in late. Mm -hmm. They calling in, you know, do whatever it takes to be productive. Yes. Work as though you're working for God, even yeah. though you're working for man. Yeah. Trust God enough that you're going to give your best. Don't go to work and just for a paycheck. You don't know how blessed you, people don't know how blessed they are. Some people are, struggling right now just to find something to do to feed yes. themselves. Mm. My Lord, if God blessed you with children, do whatever it takes to train them up in the way that they should go so that when they get older, they would never depart from the faith. Amen. When you're at home and you have children, they suck it up like a sponge. Everything you do, everything you say, Trust and believe, even if you're single, every relationship, they sucking it all in. You understand? Like a sponge, soaking it all in. They, they listening, they, I call it ear hustling. They doing everything that they can do just to know what's going on because they're going to take that and trust and believe. And then when the teenage years come, oh, it's coming back to you, praise the Lord. That's why you have to train them up in the way that the Word of God says. If God bless you with a spouse, do whatever it takes to keep fervent prayer active in your marriage. If God blessed you in your singleness, then do whatever it takes to draw closer to him. Do you not realize, and I had to get this for myself, so this word is for me, how blessed you are to only have to answer to God? And if you're not an adult yet, just to your parents and God, we're blessed. We get to spend so much time with the Lord. I mean, if you're a parent, that's one thing. But you can say, give me 10 minutes. Give me 20 minutes to go into your prayer closet. It could literally be the physical closet. Just close the door and seek God in prayer. Hallelujah. If God blessed you with a car, do whatever it takes to seek God first, to keep your payments up. And if you 
have no payments, praise the Lord, do whatever it is to do the necessary maintenance to keep the car running so that you can get to the job that he blessed you with. Hallelujah. No excuses, praise the Lord. If God blessed you with a reasonable proportion of good health, then do whatever it takes to keep your doctor's appointments and use wisdom when it comes to the things you need to do to help and not hinder your body. I was preaching to myself when the Lord gave me that, praise the Lord. And if God bless you with the opportunity to forgive, because somebody don't have that opportunity. The person that went on to be with the Lord and you still haven't forgiven them. But do whatever it takes to forgive and repent. And don't allow unforgiveness to cause you to be bound. Be free, my brothers and sisters. Be free in Jesus. And if you do not forgive, the word says, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your transgressions. Then that's offense. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And for the children in the house, I want you to do whatever it takes to be obedient. Respect your parents, your teachers, adults, give respect to others, and do whatever it takes to do, give everything to your studies. Praise the Lord. I received a prophetic word one day, and it read, self-examination, internal work, continue to be a priority. When you blame others to, for the result of what you have done, you, not they, will continue to reap the harvest of bad attitudes and motivations. Change must begin with realizing your own culpability. Be honest with yourself and others in all things. Remember that you reap what you sow. Amen. Galatians 6 and 7 said, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap, and I pray that this helps someone. Now do whatever it takes to forgive. Amen. 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 If God blessed you today when he opened your eyes to see that there is still time to repent, release, and forgive, then do whatever it takes to get to church. Amen. I mean, you're in church tonight, but don't make Tuesday and Friday and Sunday your only day to fellowship. Commit to God. Commit to fellowship. Commit to studying the word. Commit to having a prayer life. Pastor talked about that tonight. And commit to loving others as he loves us. Praise the Lord. Now do whatever it takes to walk up right before him. And do whatever it takes to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. If you're here today and you still have to make that commitment today, is the day to do whatever it takes that you know that you know I am truly saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to also talk about the lyrics that I used in the beginning. And I give God, God all the glory. You know what I'm saying? But when we sing songs of Zion, we're going to give him all the glory. Amen. And like I said, we could be in anybody's car. They may not be where you are. Don't condemn them. Just say, listen, here, <laughs> you know, we're going to pray. Pray while the song is on. And like I said, when God gave me a message from that. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? So let the Lord trust God in every situation and circumstance and see God in it. You know what I'm saying? Don't ever give the enemy any credit. We belong to our Savior. Amen. We belong to the Lord Jesus. So even when that secular song came, I said, what if they was talking about this? What if she was talking about the Savior? Hallelujah. Amen. Ain't no mountain. Nothing. It's, I, it's whatever it takes to get to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and so when the Lord gave me this message, I have a, a friend of mine that has a, a gospel artist now. His name is Lamont Sanders. I'm giving him a plug, so to speak. And he actually wrote a song called Whatever It Takes. I said, look at God. His lyrics go, we're going to run, we're going to dance, we're going to sing and lift our hands. Whatever it takes, we're going to praise you, Lord. We're going to lose ourselves, going to flow with the Holy Ghost. Whatever it takes, Lord, yes. we're going to praise you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the word that went forth on tonight. We pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we would do whatever it takes, Lord God, yes. to draw closer to you, Lord God. I'm praying in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for everyone in the house on tonight. Oh, God, that even on tonight, Lord God, that they would even pray more. Lord God, that they would call on the name of Jesus more. Lord God, that they would, Lord God, seek you all the more, Lord God, because the world is 
is dying, Lord God. But, Lord God, we are your people, Lord God. Yes, yes. And we thank you and we give you thank all the you praise, Jesus. all the honor, and all the glory. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And it's not easy to do whatever it takes. That's why it's a test. The test is never easy. The test is never easy. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for that word. Let it sit well in our hearts. Amen. A word of encouragement, exhortation. Hallelujah. Lord, that we will do whatever it takes to please you. Amen. We thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.